Percent by mass of copper in brass. Part 1, preparing the brass sample. So we're going to begin by weighing out 1.936 grams of brass into a beaker. And we're going to add some nitric acid to this. So the goal is to figure out in that 1.936 grams of brass, how many grams of that is pure copper. So we're going to dissolve this in nitric acid. So when the brass dissolves, the copper plus two ions are formed in solution, and those have this blue color. The gas that you saw produced was uh, nitrogen dioxide, which is very poisonous, so we had to do this in a fume hood. So now I'm just going to rinse down the sides of the beaker and transfer it into a 100 milliliter volumetric flask here. So I'm just going to rinse down the sides to make sure uh, all of that brass that was dissolved, all of that ends up in my volumetric flask here. So I'm just rinsing down the sides and then adding the rinse to the volumetric flask. So this is a quantitative transfer. Again, I just want to make sure everything ends up in that volumetric flask. So we can rinse one more time, give the funnel a good rinse, rinse down the sides of the flask, make sure everything is down in the bulb of the flask. So next I'm going to fill this up to almost the uh, mark in the neck of the flask. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a dropper here to very carefully add my last bit of water. So you want the bottom of the meniscus on the uh, water to just touch the top of that line. So when we do this, we can very accurately bring this up to the correct volume, 100 milliliters in this case. So now we're going to go ahead and prepare our standard copper two solutions. So we have a stock solution that is 0 0.500 molar copper nitrate. So I'm going to dilute that to make several solutions here, which I've labeled uh, A through E. So these are going to have different concentrations, 0 0.05 molar, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So I'm just going to make 10 milliliters of each of these solutions. So right now I'm using M1V1 equals M2V2 to calculate the volume of the stock solution that I'm going to need to make my desired uh, solutions here. So just plugging in and solving there, I'm going to get the volume of stock solution. And then I will combine that with the appropriate volume of water to make all of these cuvette samples. So we're going to measure the absorbance of all of these different concentrations and produce a graph, a linear graph. That will allow us to take any absorbance and determine what its concentration is. So long as it falls within my range of data. So I'm going to need one milliliter of my stock solution combined with nine milliliters of distilled water in order to make this particular solution. So I repeated that calculation for all of my desired solutions. And I'm going to go ahead and make this first solution here. So this is a 10 milliliter volumetric flask. I'm going to take my stock solution here. I'm going to very carefully measure out one milliliter. I'm going to use a pipette to do this so I can get that exact measurement. And then I'm going to dilute it to the line on the flask with some distilled water. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my stock solution here. And I'm using this pipette. So this pipette is a tool that can very precisely measure out volume. So I want to draw some of my stock solution into my pipette. And then I'm going to add exactly one milliliters worth to my 
little tiny volumetric flask here. So now that I've measured out my stock solution, my next step is going to be to take this and dilute it with water up to the mark on the volumetric flask. So I have a little beaker here with some water in it, some distilled water, and I'm going to go ahead and use that to make my solution. So you see that there's some of this copper solution that's stuck to the sides. I'm just going to rinse that down with a little bit of distilled water here. Just making sure that all of that volume is down there in the bottom. So I can go ahead and finish filling up the bulb of this flask. I'm going to give it just a little stir there, make sure everything is combined. And once again, I can use my dropper to very carefully add distilled water to the mark on the volumetric flask. So these volumetric flasks only measure one volume. This only measures 10 milliliters, but it measures it very precisely. So again, I need to adjust this so that the bottom of the meniscus touches the top of the line. And the angle that the camera's at is a little bit from above, so it's a little hard to see. It's best to look at it at eye level. Now that I've brought that volume up, I'm going to go ahead and put a stopper on this. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of inversions, a little bit of shaking, just making sure that everything is well combined. Now I'm going to take this freshly prepared uh, solution which is 0 0.050 molar, and I'm going to put it into a cuvette. This is the tool that we will use, the vessel that we'll use in our spectroscopy. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this guy up. There's a little line on the cuvette that is the fill line. So that's near the top. I'm just going to add this until this is full. So this is a cell that the light will pass through whenever we do our spectroscopy. So I went ahead and repeated that procedure to make my, uh, my uh, calibration curve concentrations. So I'm basically going to measure all of these concentrations and make a graph. My F sample here is a blank that contains only uh, water. And then here's my sample that I've added to a cuvette. And just visually checking, it seems like it's somewhere near the concentration of C and D. So I'm expecting something around there. Now we want to go ahead and collect our data. So we are going to select uh, 630.4 nanometers as our data, uh, where we're going to collect our data. So we want to measure the absorbance at that wavelength. We're going to need to calibrate and blank the machine. Then we're going to measure and record observance for each known concentration and the sample of dissolved brass. We'll make a graph of absorbance versus concentration, and then we can use that graph to determine the concentration of copper in my um, sample. So plugging in the spectra viz, Notice the direction that the light comes from. So you want the clear part of the cuvette to face that arrow so the light will pass through it. So I want to measure the absorbance at one wavelength. Right now on the screen, you see a full spectrum. So I don't want to measure at every wavelength. I just want to know the absorbance at this particular wavelength. So right now it's set up so that it's going to uh, take data across all wavelengths. It says full spectrum. I don't want full spectrum. I want just a particular wavelength. So I'm going to go into our configure spectrometer button here and I'm going to pick absorbance versus concentration and then I'm going to choose my desired wavelength. So that wavelength is based on where this solution best absorbs visible light. So I'm going to go ahead and select my wavelength there. 
And then you see that the screen changes. Instead of that rainbow measuring all wavelengths, we're just going to measure at a particular wavelength. So now that I have this set up to collect data, my next step is going to be to blank or calibrate the machine. So on your cuvettes, you'll notice that one side is clear and the other side is frosted. That's the side you're supposed to touch with your fingers. The clear side, we want to be very clean. So we're going to use these lint-free wipes to make sure that we don't have any lint or finger grease or anything like that that might impact how the light travels through the solution. Go ahead and insert that in the correct direction. And basically what I'm trying to do here is I want the instrument to only see the copper ions. So I have to tell it to ignore everything else. So when I go to calibrate this instrument here, the lamp is going to spend a little bit of time warming up to get ready. And then we'll be able to finish our calibration. So this machine has a light and at the other end it's got a detector. And by comparing the light before and after it passes through the sample, that can tell us things about the sample, like its concentration. So in this particular instance, I'm trying to figure out the concentration of those copper two ions in my dissolved brass sample. Once I know the concentration, I know the volume of solution is 100 milliliters because that's how we made it. And then I can calculate how much uh, copper is present in that particular uh, sample of brass. So I'll eventually calculate the mass of copper based on the concentration and volume of our brass sample, our dissolved sample. And then using molar mass, I can get to grams of copper. Then I'm going to want to divide my grams of copper by the original mass of my brass sample, which was that 1.936 grams. So I want to make sure this machine is only going to see, it's only going to view uh, copper plus two ions. So my blank should have everything else except copper plus two ions. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my calibration here just takes a couple of seconds and now we're ready to start collecting data. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my blank and I'm going to insert my sample A. This is our most dilute sample so this will have our lowest absorbance. So wiping it down to make sure there's no finger grease or anything to interfere with the light. And I'm going to go ahead and pan back to our computer screen here. And I'm going to press the green collect button. So once I do that, uh, data will start to appear. So whenever I press start collection, it has no idea what the concentration of this sample is because I haven't told it yet. So I'm going to hit keep and then type in the concentration that that's at. So then you see that it shows me concentration and absorbance for that particular sample. So now I'm going to repeat this process. I'm going to go ahead and grab my next sample, which is B. So this one is 0.1 molar in my calculations. Put that into the machine. And when I do, we see that we have another dot that appears. I'm going to hit keep, tell it the concentration that's that represents there. And then you see there it places my next dot on the screen. So we're going to continue this for all of our samples, switching them out and remeasuring that absorbance and re-entering in the value for the concentration. So here's our next one which is our 0.2 molar. And so we see we're getting this nice linear graph so far. So that was sample C. Let's go ahead and add D, which is going to be 0.3 molar. 
So you see its concentration or its absorbance increases, and that's because the concentration is higher. So putting in that concentration. Now our display here doesn't give us a correct number of sig figs, but we know our sig figs from our um, calculations. So now I'm going to go ahead and insert the most concentrated sample, which was uh, E. And this one is 0 0.400 molar. So now we have this really nice graph and we can go ahead and measure the absorbance of a sample. And based on the linear fit of this graph, we can predict the concentration. So next I'm going to want to insert the uh, brass sample. So here we're putting in, this is S, which was our diluted brass sample. And so based on this absorbance, we can calculate what its concentration is likely to be. So we see it's around 0.47, so we can infer the concentration from that. And just like we thought, it's somewhere around the concentration of uh, sample C because they have very similar absorbance. So a complete data set is posted online. That's what you're going to use.